welcome to the DNJ show where the initials stand for Delaney, Neve, and Jamie. On today's show, we have Marcello Tag joining us. Marcello is a conceptual music artist, DJ, and producer who has been touring the European electronic capitals since starting out 14 years ago in 2001. He was approached one night by Artful Dodger, where it all began. So, hi, Marcello. It's great to have you here. Hi. Thanks to you. So, 14 years, that's a long time, isn't it? Yes, it what, is. What, what was that like when you first got asked to do all of this? Well, <laughs> first of all, I'm sorry for my English. I don't speak English so well, so oh, no, I will fine. do a lot of mistakes speaking with you. And was um, was so, so strange, because I was a party in Bath, mm -hmm. and... Um, at the end of the night, it was like six o'clock in the morning. I was a little bit drunk. <laughs> a little bit? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good story. <laughs> and yeah, I cannot say I was drunk. <laughs> and uh, I arrived in a console booth and uh, speaking with this guy and having a beer together. Uh, it's right, it was, the place was pretty empty. Mm -hmm. And I say, have you ever tried? He say, no, I don't. You won't what I have to do and so I start to to touch the mixer okay. and it was love love first sight as um, they say yes <laughs> I say well, well sound, I can do it, it. <laughs> okay <laughs> it was uh, fantastic and did you have an interest in DJing at all before that happened I always love electronic music mm -hmm. I always love to to partying and to always love uh, live act I never uh, have the, um, the time to to be concentrate on DJing or to play other kind of instrument because I was studying at the time. But after that uh, the experience, I say, okay, maybe I have to change something in my life. Mm. Mm. So it's like quick changing career, career you yeah. suddenly realize yeah. what you want, love. My parents were so happy about that. <laughs> 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 Do you have any um, influences in your music um, industry and style that help? to maybe develop your own music or do you um, have you developed it on your own well uh, I think that um, now you listen music every minute of your life so uh, it's pretty easy to to be contaminated even if you don't know even you know listen advertising listen yeah. radio even you don't know you took uh, you took something from whatever you listen yeah so I I'm, I'm was um, very, very inside music, thanks to my father, because when I was like a baby, a kid, um, my parents used to listen every day mm. music, so I think that... It's ingrained from a very, very young age, yeah, you start to listen to it, and then that's Exactly, the so I still have something yeah. inside yeah. me of the period. Was there any particular music they used to listen to that you used to love growing up? Well, they really love... Uh, all the pop music uh, from the 70s, so the Brit uh, music, mm. like from Beatles to, to Pink Floyd, uh, all the big all the band, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all the <laughs> legends. The Beatles, yeah. yeah. Do you find though, with obviously because, you know, that's all English or, you know, British bands, but you're Italian. So do you not find that any of your like, the music that you listen to from that cultural background comes into the music that you, do you not meld them together in a way or? Well, um, Italian music uh, at that time was mm, a little bit uh, mm, too much traditional. I mean, mm, we had some good artists that uh, they were very actual. Uh -huh. uh, like there is one called uh, Lucio Battisti that was one of the mm, most new artists at the time. Mm -hmm. But the innovation wasn't Italian at all. I mean, uh, England always had uh, a big story in the music industry. Mm. So it's better to draw your influences yeah. from something stronger. Yeah. I understand, I see. So getting back to the DJing, getting up there for the first time to DJ must have been like very nerve wracking. How did you deal with that? How did you cope? Like um, you mean the first time that I yeah, really ever DJ, yeah. Well um, the day after coming back to Oxford where I was studying uh, I start to, to to understand how this this kind of stuff works. So, uh, ask to friends uh, where I can buy some decks, uh, uh, stuff like this, <laughs> and I start to to try and try and try because you know it's it's a question of uh, dedication 
and time on the decks. Practice of course, makes perfect. Yes. Mm. Um, obviously, you've like played to loads of crowds in loads of different countries. Um, what is the biggest crowd that you've ever played to? Okay, I remember exactly. I was like uh, uh, 28, 29, and um, it was this festival called Electro Waste Festival in uh, Arezzo. It was uh, a huge festival, and um, I had to do the warm up of the festival from uh, 11 to midnight. Mm -hmm. But uh, the boss uh, of the festival came to me and said, No, you're going to play at the peak time from 2 to 3. I was saying, Well, are you sure? I was like, <laughs> Big shock. Yeah. Yes, because I was prepared to play, you know, when the crowd get in, slowly, slowly. So lucky. And so I was playing after too many DJs, before Ellen Alien, and I had in front of me almost uh, 15,000 people. So oh. it was wow, like, it was oh like this. God. I can imagine. Yeah. I, could, yeah. I couldn't. Yeah. I'd, pass out, that, I'd, yeah. I'd pass out. I'd pass out with the nerves. Yeah. yeah. I would. <laughs> and yes. and after, after the first uh, track, Everything was okay. Mm. Before the, before I was, <laughs> the violin, and the next I was like, okay, Marcelo, come on, you can do on. it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I, I think, think you have to get through the first one, don't you, to then yeah. get comfortable with it. Yeah. Is, After is, the first one. Did you find that your nerves sort of, you know, the minute the, the beats hit down, the nerves went whoosh straight out into the audience, and you just. That was it. No, well, now I'm a pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> after after that time, yeah. So having said that, do you find that when you when you stand there, you know, you've got the audience, you've got the headphones on, your music, do you have a connection with your tools, like the the actual instruments that you're playing? Is there some sort of? It's an extension of the body. Yeah, like a bond. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Of course, it's like to touch your finger yeah. or your face. So it all comes. So my cello is what comes out through the music. Yes. Yeah. I'm and like a robot. Yeah. The yeah. robot. <laughs> An Android Speaking of it. your equipment, um, as we know, DJs use a lot of electronic equipment. How much do you feel that it's changed from 2001, where you first started, up until now? Okay. Uh, the industry in 15 years is completely changed. I mean, once the only uh, the only chance you have to to play music in a club was playing vinyls, and um, it was a bad thing because. Um, the approach uh, of DJing was very, very expensive because uh, you have to think that uh, buying a vinyl at the time was so expensive. Mm -hmm. And then to mix, you, you must have some of them. And um, now it's more democratic because mm, with the digital, mm -hmm. uh, you can easily get uh, tracks from from internet and paying less. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this was also bad thing because the quality of the this job <laughs> crashed down. It means right. that um, a lot more. Yeah, mm, now everybody wants to be DJ. Anybody can pick up a yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. Now mm. you can have uh, a computer. You have a program like uh, I don't want to do advertising like some program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, you start like sync sync and that's it your job is done and the computer does it all for you yeah, yeah. so mm. you don't need even to to mix it so there's something and about knowing that you have the original type background and talent the, the 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 foundations of how to learn to dj to put into your work do you feel that that's what makes you a cut above yes. the rest you yeah. still have your hair <laughs> So speaking of your music, and we know you have a SoundCloud. Everyone should check out your SoundCloud, Marcelo Tag. Um, Did you like it? Oh, we I love loved your song. it. We really dancing loved it. Dancing around the kitchen to Fantastic. that last yeah. week, giving a bit of a bop was great. So how did you get into? <laughs> like did you dance listening it? Oh, of course yeah. we did. Yeah. Oh, we were bopping along. Who doesn't? We were bopping along. Fantastic. <laughs> but how did you get into actually making your own tracks and then putting them on SoundCloud? Um, you mean when I produce music? Yeah, and then putting them out on SoundCloud. Yeah. When I produce music, I am like, uh, I'm a little bit like out of the world, I would yeah. say. I could stay in my studio for like half an hour or 10 hours. I don't, I don't realize to be there. Yeah. I'm, I really fly away with my mind. And so it's strange because I don't say I, do, I want to do a kind uh, of track like I want to do techno track or a deep track or I don't know what. I just let my just you let yourself get into it, yeah. 
Well, it's Red. a shame that we have to close it so early, but it was great talking to you, Marcello. Thank, Thank you, you so much for joining us, Marcello. It's been a real honour speaking to you. Everyone, Marcello tag. <laughs> yes.